that would not be responsible. I have a guess in front of me. I need to grow up and be serious about this. How are you doing today, Caroline? All right. So, all right. Here we go. You ready for this? Yes, I am ready. I was attempt that was that was a strong attempt so that uh, I could help you with any nervousness you you may have. <laughs> I do. Obviously, I have to my stress I pen. So I'm oh, like is that what it is? <laughs> what, well, what did I do all that for? I did a total wrong. waste of. That was a waste of my time. I could have, could have, I could have got right to the show. I was trying to make you feel comfortable. But well, you're not that's making you comfortable. Yeah, well, right before I make you uncomfortable, I'm telling you that right now. Okay, all right, here we go. So, when it comes to what we've discussed in the first episode, first segment, yeah. panic disorders, panic anxiety, the ability to have healthy boundaries with oneself, so that uh, we can have a safety net, or in other words trust ourself um uh, you highlighted to us as, as a as an overview uh, as we move into this next uh, episode i'm gonna highlight some of the points you brought out in the first one uh, we could find ourselves isolating ourselves uh, we could find our, our ourself uh, being in a position in which we don't reach out uh, to others all because anxious thoughts negative thought loops can start to happen to the point that um, well we start bullying ourselves. Uh, we literally get in a position where we can start attacking ourselves. Uh, panic attacks can come into play and our body goes into to stress because, well, we didn't have a routine of handling anxiety. Um, you've given some good tips, but of course, we know if anybody has gone to your page, you love lavender. <laughs> yes, that's correct. <great. laughs> so, just, just wanted to throw that in lavender. there. No matter what happens, get yourself some lavender. If you yeah. get nothing else from these two episodes from Caroline from the Netherlands, Amsterdam, get yourself some lavender, some right? Lavender. I'm not making fun That's of it. Wait, true. hold on. You no, know what? No, hold on. Wait, hold on one second. One second. I've got a whole bunch of these, but there's my lavender right there. I'm telling you. Listen, See? you know, Perfect. listen, uh, listen to the lady. Impressed. I'm impressed. Right here, man. Right here. I got my stuff. I got. I cook it up sometime during the show. Uh, but uh, today I didn't have to because you have so much lavender. I think I can feel it all the way over and smell it all the way over here in California. But having said that, I have only given you a very short um, sort of like sort of brief sort of description of like yep. few things you can do. There is so many practical things you can do and i obviously know that i cannot fill your whole show with all the things that i you know would like to throw out there so anyone who wants to have more tips and tricks and tools can always dm me or reach out to me or you know in any way or form and i happy to share it because it's not a secret and i'm i love to help whoever has and struggles with anxiety or panic disorders or yeah even trauma because like the feeling of, of, of anxiousness comes from so many different reasons. And, and with the, with this pattern uh, that the pandemic uh, uh, parenting uh, painful memories, a number of things that can start to come into play. These things start to happen. The tips that uh, you offer uh, online and uh, for people to literally reach out and talk to you and get some assistance during these uh, difficult times it can prove to be beneficial to them making it day by day uh, and not feeling overwhelmed uh, every day, but they know they can start to learn, as you said in the first segment, learn to, to have a safety net, that they're their own yes. safety net, right? If yes. I understand. Yes. Right. Now, painful memories are a reality of life for many. Uh, and it could be one huge one. It could be a series of them. But either way it goes, it, it plays havoc on someone's emotions. Trauma is a common word used, of course, uh, but when people have these painful memories or traumas, uh, traumatic experiences revisiting them, um, please give advice for those that are dealing with that, especially when it comes to childhood traumas as well. Mm -hmm. So like trauma per se, I think first it's very important that trauma does not need to be, like you even said, like an event. It doesn't also need to be something physical like or like a car accident, for example. Trauma can happen in so many different ways. And I think a lot of people don't even know that it happened to them. So obviously your show, for example, is uh, around narcissists and uh, narcissistic abuse, for example. 
can cause a trauma as well. So, but a lot of people don't know it, that it actually happened to them. And, it, mm. and, and that's, it's important to know that emotional abuse can be just as physical abuse or anything that, that happens to us mentally can also, you know, be a trauma. So it doesn't need mm -hmm. to be something that is physically happened to you. And I think the, the most important thing when it comes to practicality, if you want to talk about that, is that you learn to understand that you're actually having a trauma response in the first place. Okay. That, that actually is pretty, pretty deep as well as important, but it's pretty deep because if you don't know, if I don't know it's happening to me, I just think I'm having a bad day and I don't recognize mm -hmm. that it's more than just what I think. There's some other things that are happening or abuse is starting to get a grip on me. So, when we speak, for example, it's narrowed down to, for example, abuse, because this is also something that I, I can relate to, narcissistic abuse, for example. In the beginning, you don't know it, of course, that it happened, because that mm -hmm. person, let's say you are in a narcissistic I get you in a second. Can you hear me? Oh. Can you hear me? I got you. Yeah. Can you okay. hear me? I got you. That you were saying you were saying in a for example narcissistic um abuse per se in the beginning you don't know it because that other person if you for example in a relationship with someone uh, they love bomb you this is like the the, the typical thing so they, they feel very comfortable around that person but eventually down the line if you're longer six months a year can be longer sometimes for or shorter for others um, that person to start, to starts to change and you remain the same and you start, mm -hmm. for example, eventually because of the then it, uh, gaslighting help happens from that person or that the person starts mistreating you or belittling you, then mm -hmm. eventually you yourself start doubting yourself. And it, that's, that's the beginning of anxiety, for example, or it's also the beginning of, of, of a trauma that is going to happen to you. Okay. Um, so it's because if someone does that for a long time, like gaslights you for months or years on end, it leaves a trauma. It's an emotional trauma because that, that, that you lose yourself in it. It can push you to the edge of being suicidal, if you, even though you have never ever considered or thought that you would end up there. But by right, being right. In, in a relationship mm -hmm. like that, it can happen. Right. So that's, um, that's the thing. And, how how can what can you do when you have a trauma or when you are in an anxiety like that is well if you're in a relationship like this and you you're still in it well then it's good to make a plan <laughs> uh, before yeah. you get out of it yeah. um having a concrete good plan a lot of the times uh, how it happened to me i had no social network anymore uh, wow. was isolated so that's the thing start building a life for yourself again mm -hmm. but for anyone who experienced anxiety based on that trauma or or a depression based on some it can it doesn't matter if it's trauma related or not for me the answer is always the same it is start learning to love yourself and being and having and creating healthy boundaries because most of the time whoever struggles with anxiety panic disorder or has like had a trauma their their boundaries have been violated not just once and they're just so used to it it's just something that you can learn it doesn't matter if it's childhood trauma or when you're an adult you have learned that it's normal and okay that someone violates your your boundaries mm -hmm. and oversteps them over and over and over again so it's it's like someone tramples into your garden and makes it destroys all the flowers, and that's yeah. what the trauma is. So you have to learn to close the gate, so that yeah. no one can come in again and start planting. And, and that's the self-love. When that happens, that self-respect, that self-esteem, that care for oneself, that self-love, goes into action to protect oneself. And when we do, you just gave the illustration of closing the gate. 
Yeah. Right? Because if, yeah. if we have the gar garden and it keeps getting destroyed by the same person, dog, human, whatever, the, yeah. the same thing keeps, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the same thing keeps happening. Yeah. We, as you said, we recognize, oh, my gate is open. Let me, let me stop this and close the mm -hmm. gate. So when yeah. we start to do that or set up a boundary or we solidify a boundary, then we are, we are making it much more manageable uh, that we're not going to be traumatized, at least from that avenue, not from that gate. That gate's yeah. closed. That person, yeah. I know they're going to bring this to me. I need to close that. That can yeah. be hard for some people, though, right? Yes. Yes, it can be very hard. The, the most challenging thing Uh, you still have me? Oh, I lost her for a second there. Okay, so everybody, hopefully you can hear me. She's going to step out of it, and she's going to reboot. Remember, this is uh, coming to you from Southern California, a connection with uh, uh, Caroline, who is in the Netherlands, Amsterdam. Uh, so she's going to reboot and hopefully come back to us. Oh, as I say that, there she is. Hello, 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 Sorry. hello. No, <laughs> no. Hey, you know what? Happened. That's all right. Hey, this is our platform and we work mm -hmm. through the internet and everything. You were making a point there. We were talking about yeah. making sure the gate is closed, but it can yeah. be challenging. It can be difficult. The most challenging part is closing the gate and not allowing huh. it to be open again. Because when you have experienced a trauma, you, you re you're reliving the past over and over first of all, in, in the now, mm -hmm. but you also made it, it, it becomes your normal, especially when it was a childhood trauma. Th leaving the gate open is normal for you and feels yet so familiar. So okay. whenever something happens, no matter how, how bad it is, mm -hmm. um, even that feeling of anxiety, and it sounds so strange when I say it, but it can feel like normal that you are, that's, how you are, you, you feel like that anxious me, that is just me, especially when you were a child or a teenager, it just manifests within you that you feel this is how I am. I'm, let's say I'm speaking now for myself, like for example, Caroline, that anxious girl, mm -hmm. that right. feeling of nervousness or that feeling of like uncomfortableness or when someone says something to me is uncomfortable and doesn't make right. it less se severe, but it feels, on the other hand, just very normal. And that makes it so challenging to close the gate. And it requires a lot of tools and skills to do that, mm -hmm. to really close the gate. And that's why a lot of the times people who struggle, for example, with childhood trauma, they, they cope for so long by themselves. And it only comes up when in their mid twenties or mid thirties, something like this, because their the anxiety or also the, the well, you can't compare to others, right? Sort of thing. Like, hmm, something is different with them, and that's the uh, then these things come up, and you have this other bit more rational stepping back from from your own experience, the moment, and that that is becoming then challenging. So it becomes challenging to deal with those childhood traumas, especially when the gate is open, closing the gate and uh, starting to recognize that you're going to have to tend to that garden that's been destroyed. Yeah. Uh, it may be challenging, but it it's going to reap some really beautiful benefits. Uh, yes. But it, it, it is, is possible. It is going to be hard. You mentioned, did you say love and some skills? Is that what you said? I'm gonna make sure if I understand. Yeah. Like, Self love is for me the, the 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 key to 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 yeah closing the gate. Self love goes kind of it goes hand in hand for me with self awareness. Self love, self awareness, and literally you have to be a little bit open, 
but I think most people also are who, who are at that point to make changes, but not because you as a person, you need to be changed. No, it's more like there's, you have been learned a core belief system about yourself mm -hmm. that might not be entirely true or not at all even. And that is a bit of a scary factor because especially when we're adults, then we don't like, no one likes change. It's also not about changing your personality. It's more about something was so severe that happened and you've been like over and over, literally the garden has been destroyed and there is no grass left. Wow. But you deserve, and that's the, that's the thing. And everyone who has experienced the trauma, they want that garden. They want yeah. that gate yeah. closed and you deserve it. And that's also the reason why why I went online or why I made my profile in the end, because I had a traumatic experience and I have been to that point where my garden was destroyed and I was like literally thinking, um, yeah, just leaving it all, you know? And right, yeah. Um, that's, and basically that we could say like, okay, that's, that's being suicidal in at least thought right. life oh, is right. done. But mm -hmm. I decided and worked through it and reached out and went beyond my knowledge as a psychologist and realized no there is light at the end of the tunnel and happiness is possible and it's not something impossible because a lot of people who had traumas and severe traumas and even worse than mine there's no comparison to it because the feeling is of course. Well the same but um that it is possible to be happy and live a life that you deserve living mm -hmm. again. Yeah. And that is for me so important. Yeah. The ability to recover is possible. Uh, adjustments may need to may, may need to be kicked in, may 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 have to come into play. There's certain things that are going to be uncomfortable as you make the transition from living a life of accepting uh, the garden just being torn up all the time. To the point that yeah. there's no grass and the flowers are, are yeah. destroyed. But there's a moment when it becomes, well, you know what? I have to work on this. I'm going to have to get some tools. I'm going to get a little spade. I got to get a little rake. I got to get, you know, I got to get some knee pads because yeah. I get to get down here and roll up my sleeves. I got to, got to get some fertilizer. Got to get, uh, got to water, get a watering program and a, and a, and a cycle in which that I'm taking care of everything, tending yeah. to pulling out the weeds and, so there's a process that will come into play, but you're saying it's all worth it. Yes, it is. It is. And I especially think people who suffered for so long, or sure, it doesn't matter, actually, this, just the suffering per se, mm -hmm. is, is something that it, you deserve to still experience the other mm -hmm. side. And yeah. it is possible. Yeah. The other side for you, if you had to say the other side for you started in what year? What year did the other side become, uh, well, attainable, reachable, a process that started for you? For me, well, I would say for me, everything started to light up and that I, if I, we could go back to the garden, that my garden, when the gate was closed, yeah. was 2020. So very recent. Okay. Um, you closed, you closed the gate in, in, in 2020. I closed the gate in 2019. 2019. Okay. But closing the gate sometimes does not mean that no one is trying to knock, knock their <laughs> gate down. <laughs> uh, Okay. All right. That's really, that's really good. I like that. That's a, no, that's a very good point. Yeah. It doesn't mean, okay. I like that. You can, okay. Do, do me a favor. Mm -hmm. I'm processing that. As you said that, say it one more time. That closing the gate does not, does not necessarily mean that no one is trying to knock it down. Yeah. And that's the challenge. It's the challenge of closing it, but then you deal and I see they're trying, other people trying to knock it down or it can be the same mm -hmm. person, doesn't necessarily need to be a person, but it, mm -hmm. 
it's the process of the after the trauma, sort of the aftermath of it and the learning path and the the unlearning of your own maybe unhealthy not belief systems. It's not about a belief, it's more about the there's things sometimes you have heard from your upbringing, from your parents, or the things people yeah. try to tell you are not yeah. necessarily true, but they manifest so <laughs> deeply and they become very loud. They become very loud and they turn into thoughts and, and these thoughts turn into habits. And then we go automated. We just, we just live day in, day out with automated thoughts also. And yeah. for people with trauma or people with anxiety or panic, it's not necessarily that they they have like a motivational speaker, you know, in their, in their head, they have mostly someone who is the bully or yeah. negative. And that is the pain. And that's the problem with the trauma where you replay um, what had happened to you in forms of nightmares or flashbacks and you disassociate and you don't know where it comes from and, and dealing with that, but at the same time, also making those changes mm -hmm. is, it's hard. It's hard. It's a challenge, but it is, it's worth it. Right. Yeah. Because um, if the changes are not made and a person doesn't make those changes, the outcome is literally detrimental in, mo in, in more ways than we like to describe. Yeah. Because there's a loss of zeal for life. Uh, food will not taste the same. Uh, no. Laughter is non-existent or very, very scarce uh, yeah. to find moments to laugh. Uh, crying, or even to the point where, as one person told me, they can't even cry anymore because they lost the energy to do that. Yeah, that uh, numbness. Because, yes, the numbness yeah. that came into play. Because of something you just highlighted, um, the voices, as it were, of the voices uh, of all the negativity with, that someone said about them uh, it just mounted, not just from one person. They started to, as it were, either project it or self-sabotage it, yeah. a number of things, because they believed those beliefs that were laid down uh, in front of them as a child. Um, yeah. You see on the screen, a, a number of thoughts have been said. I have to pivot to Dot John 4. Uh, Dot John uh, is agreeing with you a thousand percent of what you're saying. Um, he's saying that uh, he had childhood traumas and has I'm taken sorry. it has taken him many years to overcome um, he overcame an addiction from painkillers uh, and he's saying to you uh, she says talking about you the mm -hmm. absolute truth um, but he's also highlighting at least from his personal experience humor is so very important um, yeah. for many I've heard that to be the case too humor is very important as, uh, one guy uh, said he was just happy to start laughing again. And I don't know, maybe, Dot John, you probably agree with that, too, uh, in your case, uh, because he, he felt like he just stopped laughing a, for a long time. Yeah. Uh, because he was still living with the people who were being abused. <laughs> uh, see, you know what? What is wrong with you people? I don't get any compliments here. What is... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, uh, can I get a compliment for at least getting half of the... Correct, you know, the statement's right. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. If somebody's watching this back and they're going to go like, what is funny? I don't get what's going on. I apologize. <laughs> First, let's just start it off by saying, I apologize to you uh, for saying what I said because you're a female and not a guy. So <laughs> please, I am so sorry. Uh, so Dot John uh, <laughs> is, it, so. is not a... <laughs> What is wrong with me? Can I get a compliment, though, instead? You go, like, Paxton, great, great job, but you're wrong. <laughs> no, no, just kidding. I'm messing around. Uh, when it comes to this aspect of life, this pressure, emotional pressure that we can feel because of childhood trauma, uh, we need to do what you said you did personally in your life in 2019, close the gate. Yeah. But that doesn't mean if you close the gate, somebody's still not trying to get in or find a way to hop over the fence to cause wow. pain. <laughs> Thank and you. I'm glad you found challenge. that funny. I'm glad, Dot John, you found that funny, but I, I'm, I'm thoroughly embarrassed that I did that to you. I'm so sorry. Uh, go right ahead. No, it's true. It is. Um, 
it is challenging that they, they, they keep the gate closed, but also in this, also what I said before, it is so familiar. So it feels also when someone wants to violate or it's not that you perceive it right away as, as violation, mm. for example, like uh, emotional abuse, for example, yeah. does not necessarily feel like that you are violated in the first place. Yeah. Um, it's the same with, with attraction or something. If, 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 if for, for a lot of women, for example, or men, it doesn't matter who fall for narcissistic personalities, they, 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 it feels so, so familiar. It is something that they're attracted to it and they, they, they like it because it was something that felt always normal to them. And that is the challenge. The challenge lies within yourself to make, first of all, obviously peace with yourself process the trauma but also making those changes and this is not that you have there's no step-by-step -step plan but in a way there also is and the best thing what I could or what worked for me the best is maybe doing a little bit the opposite what you would normally do and mm. that is actually challenging enough and also a reason for example why I use now <laughs> Instagram or, or, or expose myself in a certain why, way why you're doing this show yeah yeah <laughs> because it's opposite I, it's opposite of what you would normally do because you don't like yes. being on camera no i don't and i was told so many times <laughs> that i would be ugly or that i was not good enough that um my education was not good enough or so i believed it i believed it and the insecurity was just present and um when I closed the gate and when I started my process, um, I realized I had a lot of things, a lot of things to say. And instead of relying on those few voices that mm -hmm. were external, maybe at one point and internalized eventually, I started to listen to and consciously paying attention mm -hmm. to what is actually happening around me how are people responding do they all think caroline well you know that's not makes no sense or is it is it maybe okay and eventually i thought just try just trying and widening that belt it's still uncomfortable and still not that i'm in my element of 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 enjoyment and and maybe yeah. i will not become an actress or a stage motivational speaker but on the other hand, like, you know, also the thought, like, why not? Who's limiting me? So that limit is I'm applying it myself. And you can narrow it down to everything. So whatever you did before, try something different. Encounter with different people. To have a conversation about a different topic. Try to change a few things in your lifestyle differently. Because those things you can control. And that gives you a different outcome in the end it's just it's a, it's a bit of a practice with yourself and it can be it can yeah. be quite a journey yeah. yeah trying trying different people i love that you said that trying it differently making sure that we are not living living with a limited perspective because that's what someone gave us about ourselves or about yes. life Yes. Uh, uh, I know the term is limiting beliefs. I, I just said limiting perspective because essentially you're encouraging us and anyone that will watch this back later and those that are here now, um, beautiful dot John. Thank you, madam. <laughs> okay. I stuck that in there. You got uh, it. <laughs> yeah. I stuck on the landing. I stuck on the landing. Okay. So we're essentially talking about not just giving in to a limited perspective that someone gave us because that's worked for them. Yeah. We need to look at what works for us and be accountable for what we are doing. But you said, I don't know, is it this segment or maybe it was the last one around the 20 age of twenties in their twenties and thirties, they start a person can start to, how did you put it? Or start yeah. to see, how did it, you say it? I don't know exactly how I said it, but I, yeah. in, in, in your 20s or in your 30s, it depends how literally long you can cope. But then yeah. eventually it, it, it comes out. It, it, it's it's a, not an aging thing per se, but it's because yeah. when we're kids, our world is smaller. 
and the older we get the more we go into into the world we, work, we encounter with yes. other people yeah. naturally we start to compare but yeah. not because that's also human nature but we also look over the fence like what is going on how is their family yeah. system how mm -hmm. are they and we wonder why some people are more confident or mm -hmm. don't have the symptoms like we do or anxiety or you know and eventually it also becomes on a on a stress level if you would see like this is the same thing with the pot like i said previously if you yeah. hold it down or you can refer to a glass of water i can hold this glass of water yeah. for maybe an hour or two if i hold it for a week it will not be possible so it's yeah. the same with stress or anxiety or like anything that's heavy on our mind and and that's the same with life we can cope maybe for 10 years and we when we're teenagers we distract ourselves and we're busy and, and we but eventually it will not haunt us but it will come back to us and it will create want to deal with it it will create what you said in the first segment when you're talking about the the lid being on the pot that pressure starts that pressure starts to come up that pressure is yeah. trying to get out and you're saying this starts to show itself uh and uh, hopefully you still have me can you still have me you got me yeah can you hear me? Okay. Got you. It'll start to show itself is yes. what you're saying. Yes. Um, because we had a managed or controlled caregiving situation between a certain amount of years. But when we get uh, usually many people late 20s, their 30s, yes. early 30s, they're moving out on their own or they're moving through life, as it were, without uh, looking over their shoulder because of their parents. They start to recognize, wait a minute. What do I really believe? Who am I really? Or am I just uh, a conduit of what my parents told me or someone else yeah. told me? Now, you close the, the gate and mm -hmm. set up boundaries, and then you begin to tend to your garden, because we're using the example you gave. Yeah. A, lo a lot of people, again, find it challenging to do that because now they have to deal with the person... Uh, who's trying to get in and it may be a parent. It may have been, yeah. you know, realistically as some people have, have wrote in and, and said, they may have been molested. They may have been uh, physically abused as a child. They may have been neglected emotionally uh, yeah. as a child and a number of yeah. things. So now they're trying to navigate and now their parents, all of a sudden, all of these things start to weigh on them and they haven't closed the gate yet. Yeah. You're I saying no matter what, the, gate, the gate's got to close. You're saying yeah. that's got to be first. No matter how much lav lavender they have and how much yeah. exercise. <laughs> no, I'm just I'm <laughs> asking. I'm not making <laughs> no, a, it. It may no, sound like I'm making a statement. But. No, it, it, that's true. The gate has to close, but the gate can only close when you have like the lavender. So you need to. Um... <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's messed up. No, okay, that was good. That was good. Go ahead. <laughs> No, it's 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 not that simple that you um from one day to another close the gate and you're like, well, now I'm done and and yeah. like give get get me the plants and I'll just make my beautiful garden. No, it is it is something that you push the gate closer to the lock and closer and closer and eventually at the same time you you start already you know bringing out your tools. Yeah. And before you start, obviously, then with the planting, so it. Let's make it a bit more that maybe people also understand. The, for me, what I believe, what I've seen in my clients and also myself, is when you start practice, practicing self-love and self-awareness, that is the first step towards closing the gate. And the stronger, and the, it's creating that bond within yourself. So it's for a lot of people who have experienced trauma or had that anxiety, it's it's nearly gone. You could see like a thin string, uh, if you would see it like this. So you have to yes. strengthen that first. And the stronger it gets, the more you can put sort of like close to lock the door and start yeah. gardening. And it it's a process. It's like something um that doesn't happen overnight, but it is yeah, well, it's beautiful because eventually you can start thinking about choosing the flowers you actually like and not wow. plant the flowers that someone told you you should like. And that is a big difference. So your garden will never look exactly like 
it used to maybe when you were like younger but it will be eventually like you want it to be yeah. and that is an amazing part and that's that huge. is possible that's huge and it's possible and it's possible no it's really so, possible yes it, yes it's, <laughs> it, I, I, it can it, it can is. maybe seem like it's not but it is i'm sorry go ahead you were saying it's it's like any work and maybe the garden is in that sense a good example is because for that garden you need to be do also physical work so that means mm -hmm. you have to bring in the sand or the you know like yeah, right. you have to do it so it that is the same thing if you would see it like with life you have to do the same things so you don't just sit and wait no you get up and do things you, you work with your body you work with yeah. your mind you mm. you get maybe some some helping hands yes because a tree is yeah. maybe too heavy mm -hmm. so right. so and that's the helping hands is by reaching out or by by talking to the neighbor and maybe he yeah. has then exactly so that tool that you would need yeah. and mm. and that's what it's all about and that's also what i experienced over the last years and that helped me and a lot of other people yeah and this is your neighborhood free internet show right here on narc abuse tv consider me your neighbor right next door nice. uh, you close that <laughs> gate come and ask me for some tools i'll help you with that tree plant that tree uh, i'll help you pull weeds and uh i've got some really good friends all of the guests that have been on my show they will always come over and help you Caroline, that's what you're doing right now. You're helping a lot of yes. people, more than you know. I tell people that every time they come on here, uh, because this was never started for followers or for clicks and views and how many uh, algorithms we can fit in. Uh, this is a literally one person at a time, one guest at a time, connecting uh, growth. We get so many individuals, uh, and I know this is going to do the same, and I told you that you're going to be good on this show uh, <laughs> because – a lot of people reach out and uh, either in the comments or, or write me uh, directly and say, hey, look, I cannot believe how much I'm glad I stumbled up on your show uh, that day at that time. Uh, so if you uh, come across this platform and you say maybe you're a regular viewer and you say, well, they just covered that subject. No, this subject and a different style and viewpoint, it being delivered like Caroline today will hit the right person where somebody yesterday or two days ago uh, hit a different person. And uh, it has a huge ripple effect because if you could see the people that tell me about uh, my guests and what they do for them, you will find out that they're changing, not just that person that listens, like Caroline, you're doing right now, uh, not John and others that are speaking here and others that have spoken, but you're also helping the people that are connected to them. In, in marketing, some of you know this, that have talked to me in, in private, and I'm just going to tell you this uh, right now, Caroline. In marketing, it's uh, for every one person that pays attention to your ad, they know three people. That's four, <laughs> that's four people you just hit with that one ad because they will go tell their friend over coffee or, hey, you know what, I saw this ad. And before you know it, that one ad has, if 10 people see it, that's 40 people. And the same applies with positive, informative, and technically fun information that gets to the point, which is what Narc Abuse TV and Open Session Podcast is all about. And Caroline, you just did that today in two brief segments. We have gone 44 min 41 minutes. And in oh, yeah. those <laughs> brief moments, in those brief moments, the first segment and now, okay, you literally have shared a great deal of information. It may not hit everybody. But I am telling you, I'm, I've, I've, I take notes. And what you have outlined can help a person navigate the day. And I truly and humbly say to you, I appreciate you a great deal for doing this. As a psychologist uh, and being transparent about your own uh, challenges and how recovery is possible, um, I appreciate you doing that. In cold, from cold Netherlands uh, <laughs> and Amsterdam, to here in warm Southern California, I appreciate it. Don't think you're done and over with. You're almost done. I have to ask you about what's happening in November. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, it's for me it's sort of a hard project. Um, for the past, well, when I closed my gate, um, 
I decided also to literally <laughs> write everything down that helped me. And along the way, like, I think it was a year and a half ago um, when I started actually feeling better. So it did not take that long. Um, I had this moment under the shower for me. The shower is a comfortable place and I think there a lot and it's a positive place for me. And I was like, I want to share this because what works with for me and what worked also with my, my clients, um, I want to share this. If that helps one person, great. And I noticed that obviously being a psychologist myself, so many people with trauma, with anxiety, um, depression, or burnout, they they sit on waiting this time tremendously long. And knowing myself how it feels, I was thinking one day longer that you have to sit alone yeah. is torture. And it mm. no one should should try to should do that. So I thought, okay, what what can I do? I like to be practical. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. just how I am. And so I created a, a program and wrote a an active workbook and journal book and used all the tools. So including the lavender <laughs> here um, and everything and packed it into a box and it's going to be ready in, in November. So I, cool. I want to help people and empower them to help mm -hmm. themselves with a little bit of me. So I've like packed it together in a box. You can oh no, no, you got to let us see. You know, you got to let us see better than that. Come on now. You got to, I want to see, <laughs> I want to see, see, I want to see. So, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Yeah. So yeah, right there. Hold, hey, literally right there. physically made the box. Um, it's, it's the, it's the almost final version of it. So it will be nice yeah. and printed things like that because my, okay. my project has, is called be Yuma. It's, okay. it's because of, because you matter. So the okay. short, the be you ma, because you matter, because that's my yeah. mission. Yes. And there's everything in here that you need to start your, to start your self-awareness journey and your self-love journey. And that awesome. helps you also cope with anxiety and anything negative stress related. I it gives it. you a little bit that spirit of like stress, let's find happiness. I made it consciously a physical workbook but you will have me in it so i've like made videos in it so you can scan it with qr codes and i have practical exercises from self-compassion to mindfulness um everything that worked for me and for my clients i wanted to share so it's actually not a, my own project it's a project from literally sort of my clients actually for anxiety patients to I, other I, anxiety patients yeah, I do not know what to do with myself right now because you're going to make me cry. I am so happy to have met you. That is awesome what you're doing. <laughs> you. I am serious. Thank no, you, you are showing others. No, you that, make me that cry. <laughs> you, you are show, no, it, crying is good. Hey, man, I tell my daughters that all the time. My son, too. Hey, crying is good. Listen, um, you have shown others the important that that. The gates have hinges <laughs> that you can you can push it and it'll close. It's not stuck. It's not stuck. And if it is, get some help and push it closed because that's what you're doing. You're helping others to push the gate closed. Yeah. You have decided to use your creativity and the childhood trauma and stresses and challenges, and you've put them together to create a ripple effect that will help someone not give up not take their life, not give in, not become numb to the point that they don't want to live anymore. That's what you're doing. You have, there's tons of stuff happening across the screen here and you've got hearts that have flown for you and are still going right now because you have just touched people by telling them what's going to launch. It hasn't even launched yet. No. Um, and, and, and they're anticipating it. So what you're doing is what's needed. You being on today, you mentioning the, the tips you've outlined, people can watch this back over. They can share it with a friend. You have a friend that's struggling. They need to know about this kit. You have yeah. a friend. You have a friend that's walking a path you've already walked of being uh, uh, full of painful memories and still ongoing painful memories and negative thought loops, as you've often discussed on your page. Uh, 
then tell them about the kit. Tell them about uh, Caroline so that they can connect with her. Our whole purpose here is to showcase people who want to help others. We do not showcase people who want to make money. No. That's why some of them, very famous, are you don't see them on my show because they only want me to have so many followers, which is either 5,000 or 10,000, then they'll come on my show. Mm. This psychologist has come on the show to share of her heart and her mind, and I truly appreciate it so much that I got to tell you what everybody else is saying over here uh, before we have to go. I'm going I'm I'm to do a quick read here. So I got to scroll back up here. Um, for example, I got to start off with this one because when, when this came up quite a while back, it made me smile. Riviera Time. Do you know who that is? Anyhow, uh, no. Riviera <laughs> Time says, when competence, kindness, and warm heart come together, that's Caroline. Oh, God. Uh, I'm sorry. That's like, <laughs> you, need to, you need to put that somewhere. I don't know. That's pretty oh, good. That when competence, so kindness, and warm heart come together, it's Caroline. That's a great compliment right there. And it, it is absolutely spot on, a thousand percent spot on. Uh, Dot John uh, talked about, of course, what he went through. He encouraged anyone. Uh, I did it again. She encouraged uh, everyone uh, that humor is very important when you're dealing with childhood trauma as you work your way through it to try to, uh, uh, to make your way through life that's difficult. Um, the pack coach, of course, <laughs> says, you are beautiful, talking to you. And then she said, what, uh, who, in other words, who told you uh, essentially anything different uh, because you mentioned that earlier. Do you remember that? You mentioned that earlier. So she's giving you compliment that you are indeed beautiful. Uh, trying different is very important. It rewires the brain and it changes you. Um, re okay, just for a moment, rewiring the brain is very important when it comes to painful memories and childhood yeah. trauma. But no one can expect that overnight. But the pack coach makes a good point here. It is something that is important to try to do something different though, correct? Yeah. You will, over time, rewire your brain automatically. The outcome, if you do something different, is not going to be the same. And that will encourage you to keep doing something different. Yeah, and not, and not to think that, oh, you know, they said rewire the brain, I tried something different and it didn't work. That's not what the pack coach is saying. She's giving some good advice, same advice you've been giving. Yeah that we need to try something different. Um, uh, Dot John says practicing. Is that what they said? Yeah, I think that's what they said. Uh, maybe not. Anyhow, so, uh, you've got uh, other compliments here. Um, concerning the box, or excuse me, the launch, your kit, yeah. the yeah. pack coach says that is so cool. Great idea. Love it. Uh, and Dot John, Dot John says, yes, talking about you. She has helped, and that's all in capital letters uh, in the chat. Um, and Sabine, uh, who will be a guest on our show soon, uh, she says, great work. Um, Sabine also says, beautiful lady. Man, you're getting some love on the, you're getting some love on the screen here. I, no, I really love it. I do. And Anne, Anne gives you some hearts, and she gives you some flowers, a red rose, and, and the clapping hands. Um, I tell people this all the time. When they come on this show, we, we got the best audience. We got the best viewers ever because they are so interactive. They tell you exactly what they think, and they're, they're always positive and encouraging. Um, but um, I'm, I'm going to ask you this before we uh, end today. Mm -hmm. When it comes to coping with anxiety, I'm going to ask you this. I'll just show you. I'm going to show you what I have here, okay? And then we're going to okay. end the show. I've got this card. Yeah. And then I have this card. Right? Okay. These are, these are la the last two that I'm pick picking here. Mm -hmm. Okay. You don't get to choose because I'm going to read the green one last. Okay. But this one, I'm going to mention that I'm going to say this to you. And I want you to just go ahead and give whatever positive encouragement you want to pass on to the audience before we go. Okay. I, I thought I have to say this here because somebody just, Dot John just put something on the, on the screen. And I had a feeling she was going to say it was Dutch what you wrote, uh, but I wasn't sure. Um, but uh, can I, I'm going to spell something. To, do you see it? Do you yeah. see what she yeah. wrote there? 
Yeah. Do you know what that mean? That word means? Yes, I Does know, it mean practice? But I'll be honest with you, like I don't speak Dutch yet. No, okay. <laughs> so, okay. I speak this much Dutch. I got okay, I got a, a brother that lives Dutch. in Denmark and all that. So he he said words to me in Dutch and I I have an idea what it means, but you gotta help us out, uh Dot John. And please give me a name or make up a fake name so I can call you that too. Uh, um <laughs> all right. Um I got, before I get to the card. Uh yep, I'm gonna read Pat Coach says, Yep. And we can order on someone's name as a gift. She's highlighting the fact that we can also get your, your kit as a gift uh, for someone. Uh, if someone's looking for a gift, uh, to do that as well. Um, keep that in mind, everybody. Uh, great suggestion uh, by the pack coach. Uh, Anne Crosby says, it takes time to heal and rebuild your life again from childhood trauma. And she gives the heart. Um, you personally can speak of that. She's agreeing with you as well as many others that will see this. I, I, I'm going to go ahead and get to this card. Okay. Two cards, everybody, mm -hmm. just in case you just got here. Hello, Danny Smith, 74, <clears throat> and others. Hello, Danny. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, coping with anxiety, tips. Give us two tips. Or I just say, why don't you just give us one, because I can give one, which would be lavender, but no, I'm just kidding. So give us, <laughs> I know, I'm teasing. I showed you I have my lavender bottle here. Okay. So give us two tips that people can mm -hmm. keep in mind when dealing with anxiety on a day-to-day -day basis. The first thing that pops into my head, because it's, it's so practical and you can mm -hmm. do it anywhere, I would literally sit down on a chair Get myself, uh, can be a cup of water, but can be also a cup of tea, coffee, whatever you have at hand, anything. And try to work with your senses. It's a very, very practical thing. It gets very fast. One thing that I would recommend before you start is if, if, if you are already on the verge or the, at the edge of an, a panic attack, then don't start right away with the exercise. Close your eyes for a few minutes. And just focus on your breathing and then do the exercise. Because when you close your eyes, you shut out like, you know, a visual sort of... Visual trigger. distraction. Yes. Okay. And that already helps. Then you're still anxious possibly. And that, but mm. you can still try to work with your senses. And what you do is you focus solely on the cup, on the glass, whatever you have in your hand. Put your feet next to each other and onto the ground. If possible, take off your shoes and socks because that yeah. makes you feel very grounded. Yeah. But try to feel it, feel like how, where the edges are and mm -hmm. focus on it. Focus on it. You can even look at it and follow your fingers. Try to do it with the thumb. That's very helpful. Like really try to be slow. And the, 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 in your head, that slogan should always be slow because whoever is anxious, whoever is in a panic state, is yeah. going fast and the only thing is slow you don't need to think about anything else and you just breathe i mean my water doesn't smell like anything but ideally you have a good tea which is also part of my box so i have created oh, my own oh, tea awesome. awesome um it was quite a process but it is yeah. very uh, helpful to have a like a herbal tea for example something yeah. that's calming and you smell it and then you slowly breathe work with it, try to focus on, on noises, try to pick out if there are any noises or nothing, or yeah. just enjoy the silence. And then right. taste, obviously, also the, the tea or the water or the, whatever you have, you know? And mm, keeping it in your mouth is also yeah. very important. So counting, most people have this tendency of counting one to 10. You do exactly the opposite. You count backwards. Uh, and keep it 10 seconds, but counting backwards in your mouth. And here's the challenge because your brain is not used to counting backwards and it's much harder. But what happens if you count backwards and you really focus on counting backwards, you keep the try to taste, you, you cannot stay attached to that thought, to that negative yeah. feeling. So yeah. eventually, if you do it regularly, you you decrease the anxiety you automatically so you mm -hmm. you're kind of trying to snap out of it step out of it 
Mm-hmm. And that's a simple exercise. It's literally also part of my program. And you will see me in it doing it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but you can follow it along. And it's so helpful. But, but a lot of people don't know it. So this is a one, one good example. Another one can be that you lie down on the ground. Just if you have a yoga mat or something. And just mm-hmm. stay there. Because as long as your your whole body is attached and grounded and to yeah. to something that is really helpful and it makes you feel grounded. Yeah. These are just these are just random two things. There are so many other things you can do. Of oh course. come on now, don't do that. Just keep going. I'm just sitting there going like, <laughs> okay, I'm, I got to get what I got to get what I got to get one for you. I took yeah. your advice while you were talking and I tried yeah. something that I've never tried during the show, okay. and that was to you count from ten. Oh, ten. Okay. No. no. Listen, I tell you the camera right now. I point the camera down. My shoes are always off during the show most of the time. <laughs> My shoes are, it's just, listen, I'm I'm a beach freak anyhow. So I'm always Great. walking around barefoot, even when I shouldn't. Uh, so uh, I'm either in flip-flops or barefoot. So I'm always, yeah. Uh, but uh, no, not that one. It was counting backwards yeah. uh, while you were talking. Mm-hmm. And I did recognize that my train of thoughts became more centered instead of what I was going to do next, but honed in even deeper than I normally do to what you were saying. Uh, So by the time I got to uh, number six, my brain, I felt my, I literally felt my brain changing. Yeah. See, this is something different. You see here. Because I I normally go slow. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Mm. Say it again. No, say it again, please. This is the thing about if you do this regularly, even if you're not in an anxious state, or you yeah. think you're not, it's already yeah, right. you're implant in, you're integrating something into your day yeah. that is different that you didn't do before. And that is already, like you mentioned before, you, your outcome will be different. And if mm-hmm. you are anxious or on the edge of the panic or not well, you know, and you, you have done and practiced this on a daily basis and then you do it just again, you will mm-hmm. see your brain literally res- responds much faster to it. And mm-hmm. you are, you're shortening also the, the, the times you are in that anxious phase or anxious mm-hmm. state slowly and slowly. So it, it, it is, it is possible. It is, it's, I've seen it myself, I, experienced it myself. And it's, 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 it's every time for me, it's like, wow. <laughs> yeah. I, I literally just a moment ago, literally felt my, I, I'm not kidding. I literally felt my head different. It literally felt like it was going like downshifting. It literally, that's, that's the best way I can, no, that's the best way I can describe yeah. it. When I was counting back while you were talking. Uh, it gives you maybe that sensation. Some people, depending how sensitive they're Yeah, that's what it was. Physical it, gave, it was like a sensation was happening in yeah. my head where it was like yeah. it was down, like, a, like you're in a car, downshift, like it, it was downshifting all of a sudden. And yeah. it was just weird for a moment while you were talking, I was going like, and then by the time I got to number three, I was in a place that I normally am not during a show because during That's the show, it. people, no, people tell me, well, you know, you, you, you go, you talk really slow. I drive slow. I talk slow. I mean, I didn't, no, 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 <laughs> no, no I'm just, side. <laughs> and, and then I just went slower just doing that backwards and it freaked me out <laughs> in that moment. I just didn't let it show on my face while you were talking. I was going like, Whoa, that was crazy, dude. I just heard you say stuff. I didn't, you know, I probably would have missed. It just, it, it settled with me deeper as I went mm-hmm. slower. I just wanted to tell you that. So, you know, everybody's Thanks here. On the, we, we got to, hey, that's what I do. You know, I share. I share. <laughs> uh, but if, if I get that kit, I'm not sharing that. <laughs> uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to the kit here in just a second. And then we have the green card. But I have to tell you what's happening on the screen here. The pack okay. coach says, great advice. And Crosby says the same thing. Great advice. Uh, they all are, in, are being encouraged by that. Uh, thank you for everyone that has uh, passed through, or if you are passing through right now, free your, free your beautiful soul here, as well as Phoenix and a few others, Susie Worth. Uh, and if, by the way, um, if it's your first time here, this is a channel, IGTV channel, or essentially Instagram's YouTube, uh, in which we have the Narc Abuse TV network. Uh, we do more than just talk about narcissism. Uh, we literally focus on recovery from abuse, uh, recovery from sobri- for sobriety, and a number of other things. But today we're focusing with Caroline on anxiety, trauma, childhood trauma, 
and a number of things. We finished one segment or episode, and now we're finishing this one. And now, the green card. Okay. Okay. You're, you're okay. You're safe. Because yeah. anybody that has watched this regularly and some of my former guests will go like, man, he must really like, like her because he's not giving her the yellow card, which is no one wants to get those. They are always very difficult and challenging. I'm not going to do that to you. I'm going to give you, because you already let me know, you don't like being on camera per se, but this is a new adventure. So I'm going to make yeah. it very simple. Okay, thank you. <laughs> three things. Three things I'm going to say here. First one, mm -hmm. feel f and respond freely, uh, yeah. uh, as comfortably as you like. If you had a choice between these two things, if you had a choice between these two, which one would you choose first? A cat or a dog? A cat. <laughs> it's like you were being politically correct for like two seconds and you were like, a yeah. cat. <laughs> no, I love dogs too. I just, you know. Like, Look at you. The disclaimer, yeah. your face right now is kind of like, oh, I love dogs too. <laughs> I love cat. <laughs> no. I would probably have both if I could. But okay. I, I have to say practical advice. It's a cat is just easier to handle for me. <laughs> so we're starting a fight because on the screens, <laughs> Pat Coach was like, "Dog, what a happy!" Yeah. We're gonna start a fight right here. Gonna, yeah. uh, okay, wait, hold on a second. Dot John's okay. gotta go. Can we just say to Dot John, she she's saying she has to leave. So can okay. we just just wait? Bye, Bye. Dot John. She says thank you. Gotta run. Thank you. Thank and she so gave you. Me. She's throwing kisses out to you. All right. So all right, you said cat. Now here we go. Um. This is an easy one. This is real easy because you brought it up okay. first. I was going to bring it up now, but you brought it up first. Be Yuma. What does that mean yeah. to you? What does Be Yuma <laughs> mean to you? For me, it means doing exactly what I want to do. Helping and having that opportunity. And I got to say quickly, I know, like, but I can only do it because my sister actually believed in me. Mm -hmm. And oh. said, I'm going to support you in this. So she oh. actually is funding the project. So big wow. thanks to my, my big sister here. Oh, wait. Hold on um, a second. Hold on a second. <laughs> All the little kids in the, in the box, they cheer for her. Okay, go ahead. Um, because I had this, this project and this idea, and I called her on the day, literally jumped out of the shower and said to her, this is what I want to do. And... We also came up together with the name of Biuma, and we said this is it's because you matter, and it just everything fell into place. And for me, it's a project I love. I love waking up every day thinking, when it's ready, I can give it to someone, and I hope it helps. I hope someone. Okay, you gotta hold it up now. You gotta hold yeah. it up for everybody. You gotta hold it up now for everybody oh, that yeah. just joined. Yeah, it's. You gotta show everybody one more time. The mock up version, such a final version. That's okay. That works. But it will be Beautiful. nicely printed things on it, and you yes. will have everything in here. And there's like underneath, uh, the, I took out the stress pen myself, so because I needed okay. it today. <laughs> a stress, okay, stress <laughs> pen, okay. Yeah, and there's a program in it. It's it's a journal book and workbook with videos wow. inside of it. It's a whole month of of things. It's a supplement I created literally myself with a company together that supports you with sleep but also if you struggle with anxiety yeah. sometimes people have nutritional benefits uh, yes. mm -hmm. there's a tea there's the lavender so everything yeah. i created literally myself it is something that is based on awesome. what i believe in and what worked for me and i want to share that with everyone and if it helps yeah. one person i'll be delighted and it will happy it will, without a doubt. And the other thing, please, everyone, keep this in mind. Please hashtag tell a friend about this particular show. Of course, all the shows. Always hashtag tell a friend and share it and send it to a friend that you think may need to get some, some golden nuggets out of a show. But this one, especially if you have daughters, uh, of course, it's easy for me to say that as a father of daughters, but if you have a son or a daughter, anybody struggling with their self-confidence and self-esteem or the ability to, as we talked about, close the gate, and set up boundaries, and they're struggling with that, they may need a little pick-me-up or a little boost. This kit could be the thing that works for them. Um, and Pat Coach Anastasia highlighted it. You can give it as a gift to someone. Um, and get one for yourself. Give one to your daughter. 
give give one to a, a coworker. Uh, give one to your boss. Maybe you get a raise. But whatever the case, be, <laughs> give it give it to someone so that you are you are making sure that you're encouraging them to stay emotionally well balanced to the best of their ability. Last one for yep. you here. You ready? Yes, ready. <laughs> I told you today, for some reason, I, I moved my lighting and I put it right here because I was trying to get a tan, and obviously it's working because I'm, I'm not. Now, these lights are cool, but anyhow. Um, I mean, not like cool, but they're cool. Okay, all right, so um, here we go. Last one. Feel free to tell the audience, feel free to share with the viewers your personal challenges. Mm-hmm. My personal challenges, well, there are so many, but my personal challenge, I think we talked about before, was, was my own, own trauma. Um, starting life from scratch from being homeless and having nothing. It was like a extremely, uh, well, it was not a wake-up call, but it was like a rock-bottom moment that now i'm grateful for even though it was yeah. very tough yeah um the anxiety the suicidal thoughts all of these things that i had to face but i have to say even though everything that happened to me and i would not wish it on anyone mm -hmm. they made me the person that i am today and they made me do the project that hopefully is helping people yeah. so um yeah, this is this is what I wanted to say. Like, and that also said in your during your show, like no matter what what moment or when you hit, hit rock bottom, it can be in your childhood, it can be later in life. Um, that does not necessarily need to be the end. Yeah. And yeah. even if it feels in that moment like the end, and that's for me the most important message: don't give up, keep going, mm -hmm. do things differently, reach out. And you can see the light. And I can say happiness is not something that is just empty promises. You can feel it and you can feel that inner warmth yeah. again. Yeah. Your, your, um, your candor, your honesty, your transparency to express yourself is because of the fact that you are not limited by limiting beliefs. You have stepped outside of those beliefs and you've, uh, you've, You've developed your own to the point now that you're sharing your own by means of the, the kit uh, that you have there, uh, Biyuma. Yeah. Uh, you and your sister have teamed up to yeah. make the planet a better place. You know, sometimes people... I believe people, in kindness. That's yeah, what I you think. believe in kindness? Is that what you said? That, that is the... Yeah. yeah, kindness. I think we should spread that more. And that is important. I think we need people to talk about that and spread kindness and see how far kindness get us, gets us instead of the yeah. exact opposite. Yeah, it, it's almost as if uh, everyone wakes up uh, throughout human history and they always want to change everything. And it's amazing uh, if people put more energy toward being kind than actually looking for things to change. It's amazing yeah. how much kindness has uh, more of an impact uh, yeah. in creating, creating unity um, with uh, mankind to a measured degree. Uh, but what I was going to uh, highlight about you is that um, people have maybe been in both of these two segments or will watch them back and get just down to this point before they find out some of the personal challenges that you had. Mm -hmm. And there are people every day that we come in contact with that have personal challenges and they don't know that recovery or that hope is possible. Um, thank you for, for setting a good example you may not see yourself as being a person uh, who is making the planet a better place. Maybe you do. But I am telling you, all the nervousness you felt before we started the show that you uh, wrote and told me about, and, yeah. and uh, how do you feel now? You nervous? I feel, no, I'm, I'm not nervous. I am, I feel good. I feel like, energized but also 
I feel comfortable because you also made me and the audience also made me oh. feel very, very welcome and comfortable. So that was very nice. I actually really enjoyed it. Oh, hey guys, we did our job. We made her feel comfortable. <laughs> She's a part of the family now. Welcome to the Narc Abuse, Narc Abuse family. We had a beautiful psychologist on today, everybody. If you missed the first segment, go back and take a look. Thank you all for being here. Uh, Pat Coach says, kindness is power. Um, Anne says, thank you both. You have a strength within you that inspires others. My goodness. Anne, you are awesome. That is, that is so well said. And you've got, she's got so many hearts and flowers and stuff for you in that statement. Uh, I, I might have to screenshot that and send it to you because that's beautiful, beautiful. Uh, what she, she did for you. Um, uh, others are saying, uh, Pat Coach, that uh, you can get uh, this, uh, uh, this Biyuma uh, kit that you have there and give it to others as a gift. Uh, congratulations. It makes com complete sense, talking about uh, the effort that you made to put that box together. Now, there's tea in it. There's a journal. There's videos connected. There's a... You can scan a code and you, you get stress to pen. connect stress pen. A supplement. Uh, we got we got lavender, right? You got you, <laughs> yeah, of course you have you got, put the, you you put the have lavender. lavender. You gotta have the lavender. Okay, gotta, gotta have All right. All right. We have we have gone an hour and fourteen minutes in the second segment and we've gotten to know you better and I look forward to you being back uh as regular as possible. Uh, within your schedule you. uh, to come back and encourage uh, the audience. Uh, thank you, everyone, for doing this today. By all means, I'll make sure I didn't miss anything here. Um, oh, are you there? I'm glad I, I scrolled down, and I do have something. Um, Pat Coach says, we love you. You got four red hearts, and you are amazing. And I got it. she's asking a question, where, mm -hmm. where we can get it, talking about the kit. So one more time, tell everybody. Yeah. So the Biuma box, you get, actually, if you come to my page and follow me, I will announce when it's going to be online. Um, but there's also a small sort of, it's called Biuma Official. You can also follow that page. There are a few posts and helpful things around it, but there's not much about the, the box yet. So come to Caroline Middlesdorf. <laughs> That's the only one there. So, um, and follow me. And I love I your will... name. I love your name. <laughs> Thank you. I know you may, you may I, I'm just saying, I, I think it's cool. It, most people it should be your market. Mistakes. Well, you know, you know, those are lazy people. Okay. Lazy people, <laughs> well, they, they want it always easy. So they put down people that got cool stuff. So lazy people go like, oh, it's too much work, you know? It's so, but name. your, yeah, <laughs> your name is cool. It should, you should wear it proudly. It should be, it should be I the banner. Point, yeah. It should be the banner of your marketing. It literally, I, it, should, it should be it. I That's a cool it. name. You need a T-shirt. You need a T-shirt with your name across it. <laughs> Would you say your whole family? Yeah, my whole family is involved in in the box. So we are all doing this as a team, what? sort of. Yeah, that's the. Uh, how do you, how do you say your last say your last name? Say your last name again for us, please. Middlestorf. It's Middlestorf. Middlestorf Middle yeah. Empire is being born. The Middlestorf <laughs> Empire. You better recognize. Hey, you guys better recognize. Here they come. <laughs> that's right. That's now. That's the way you're supposed to be talking. That's right. Put them on notice. Here we come. Go put Tiffany's out of business. <laughs> All right. Anyhow, we are being goofy. I got my goofy in. Okay. So, if for everybody else that has joined, oh man, they're telling you what a treasure you are. So they 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 love it. Um, thank you for everything. Appreciate it. Everybody, enjoy your weekend. No, without a doubt. Any last uh, brief words you want to say before I close out the show? Anything you want to throw out there? I just want to say that I'm so grateful. I love the comments. I am more than flattered. And I actually, I know that this will give me such a positive boost. And actually, I want to thank everyone for the kindness. And especially you, Paxton, for your kindness. Mm -hmm. it, it, it is so nice. It's so beautiful. And giving me that positive feeling, I am very grateful for. Thanks a lot. You, thank so you for nice. saying that. We appreciate it. And I really love it. My audience uh, loves supporting people who they see are real down to earth like yourself. And please keep making videos. You're getting really, you're like awesome. I've watched for your first one and watching them. You're just like, you're coming into this like superpower uh, of making videos. No, keep making them really, really good. And I do want to say this. Everyone, please like, comment, share, follow Caroline. Uh, and expect to see her again on the show. And 
I just got to throw this in uh, uh, for the audience, Caroline. Please make sure you're here tomorrow at 12 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time here in California, Southern California, and uh, throughout the world, uh, set your clocks because Susan E. Winter will be back on the show. Many of you have wanted to see her back. Uh, she was here last year when we first got started, my daughters and, and myself, and uh, she's coming back for a three-part series. Uh, to, uh, tomorrow will be the first part uh, discussing relationships and uh, the games that sometimes that can be played and how a woman can protect her heart. No scrubs. We're going to have a no scrub discussion. Wow. Uh, so feel free to join there. if you like. <laughs> nice. Okay. If you, if you like to feel free, she is Sounds like great. she did before. She spent almost three hours when she came on last year, answered as many questions and she was only going to be on for like 20 minutes. And it turned into like a, th a three part segment <laughs> that day. Wow. Uh, my, I actually, my first ever, I was so tired when I was done because there was so much happening in the chat. I think we probably had about almost 400 or 500 people show up, uh, wow. in that time frame. uh, total. I think the total that day was almost a thousand people, uh, or a little over a thousand by the time we got done and all three segments, there was so much wow. happening on the screen. I couldn't keep up. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, she's uh, well known of course, all across YouTube and throughout the world and on many, uh, nationally known and globally known stations. Uh, so, uh, enjoy the show tomorrow, but today, my girl was the diva today. Caroline, you rocked it. You and your sister, she was here without even knowing she was here in your entire family. <laughs> yeah. So thank you, everybody. Love you guys. See you later. Bye-bye. Thank you, thanks. thanks. Thank you, everyone. Bye.